Hey Snowboard Addiction, Havis here. Learning how to properly pop your snowboard is one of the most crucial things you can do to improve your riding in every aspect. In this video, I'm going to show you what is popping, how to pop, and the different ways you can use that pop to maximize your airtime and increase your flow on the mountain. The first step to doing any pop is finding your stack position. A stack position is a slight bend of the legs, putting the weight onto the balls of your feet, having squared knees and shoulders, making sure that your knees aren't coming in or out and not opening your hips. Just a straight line stacked, making sure your back is straight. When you hold this position and you squat down, your back will maintain a straight line making it so when you pop up, everything will fully extend without losing any power. Whenever you lose the stack position, be it too much edge pressure, bending forward, we call this breaking at the waist. And breaking at the waist is the number one thing you need to avoid on any jump. There's two ways to generate height on a snowboard. You can jump or you can ollie. But there's actually a third way that we will be teaching in this video. And that is combining the jump with the ollie for more streamlined motion that still utilizes your full snowboard to maximize air and control. We'll call this third method popping off the jump or pop for short. We'll start with the two-footed jump. A two-footed jump is when you squat down and jump off off both feet off the feature. This is a very entry-level way of generating height on a snowboard and one of the most common mistakes you'll see on the mountain. If you ever see anyone out of control or looking like they don't know how to hit a jump, it's probably because they're using the two-footed jump. There's two main reasons it's so damaging to your airs. First of all, it doesn't fully utilize your snowboard, allowing you to go and pop off before having your board fully leave the takeoff. That also brings us to a second reason, it doesn't fully utilize the feature. Jumps have something called kick and your board has a tail. When you do a two-footed jump, you're not maximizing the use of either of those things limiting the amount of air you can get overall. This is even more true on side hits because on side hits, the takeoff is way smaller. So that extra board length of distance will go and really impact the amount of maximum height and distance traveled you can achieve on your snowboard. Two-footed jumping also messes up your technique. This can be by putting too much pressure on your toes, breaking at the waist, just a whole bunch of things that can go and get messed up when trying to perform a two-footed jump and that's why we really want to avoid it in our snowboarding. Let's break down the ollie. Ollies are how you generate the most height off your snowboard. This is because it's the biggest motion that utilizes the biggest portion of your snowboard. Going over from your nose, shifting your weight over to your tail, and springing up. This is a super big, powerful motion that will give you a lot of height on your snowboard. The downside to this is it's a big motion, making it really hard to time off jumps. It is also incredibly hard to add tricks to this motion. When you're doing an ollie, you have a set upper body motion what's going to drastically limit what tricks you can do on your snowboard. If you don't believe this, try two things. First, do a 360 on the ground with a two-footed jump. Next, go and do one of the ollie. You're going to find it very challenging to go and ollie your 360 around because you need to go and do the ollie motion combined with the spin motion. It's possible, but it will drastically limit the amount of tricks you can go and do from that position. And that is why we don't generally use the ollie in park riding unless it's for a style factor. This is why the best thing to do is to combine the two-footed jump and the ollie. Taking the quick, small motion of the two-footed jump and combining it with the weight shift of the ollie, resulting in what we're calling popping. This is something that all pro snowboarders will be doing subconsciously. If you ever heard the term snapping off a tail, it's referring to this. By making sure you snap off your tail when leaving the jump, you'll be fully utilizing the flex of your snowboard and the kick of the jump, helping you get more control and air. Now, let's break down how to do the most effective pop. The best way to visualize this is instead of trying to lift your jumps to you, think about pushing your legs down onto the jump. So that way you're trying to make contact with your board and the lip of the takeoff as long as possible. When doing this, you wanna try keep your board keeping the constant angle of the jump, not letting your, the front of your board dip down or dip up, maintaining that strong straight angle as you go and push over and make sure you're getting your weight set over your tail 
snapping off the end. So even though what you're doing is jumping, what it feels like is pushing off the jump. The ideal timing for this has you going and leaving off the lip of the takeoff as your body's fully extended, setting you up to bring up your legs and fully control your air. Something that I can't overstate is you don't want your jump to be flattening out while going off the takeoff. You should be holding the line of the takeoff until your tail snaps off the end. This is where the highest skill cap of popping comes into play because the goal is to have your weight going from stacked in the center of your board to shifted slightly over your back foot, allowing you to make contact with the lip as long as possible. This motion is very subtle and complex, so it's not something that you're going to master in one day. Instead, it's something to always be aiming for and working on every time you pop off a jump. To recap that, what you're trying to achieve is maintaining board pressure on the lip of the takeoff as long as possible, while having your board match the angle of the takeoff for as long as possible. Another really important step to this is the smoothness of your pop. You don't want to be going and extending up and then rushing the last little bit. The smoother you can make this motion, the more consistent and fluent it will be. So whenever you're popping off a jump, make sure that you're going up and just one constant set of power to leave the takeoff. As soon as you start trying to lessen this power or increase the power, you'll be adding jank to your takeoff, increasing the chances of you going wild and losing control. So really focus in on these three steps the pressure off the jump, the angle of your board, and the smoothness of your paw. Now that you're in the air, you need to control it. And the best way to control any air is by bringing your legs up to your body. This should only be done after the full extension. If you go and cut your extension short, you'll be at risk of doing the two-footed jump. This is a super common mistake, especially when people start grabbing, because we'll go and instead of focusing on pushing off the jump, focus on bringing their legs up to their body so they can reach that grab. But when you go and perform a successful pop, the momentum of your pop up and the snap off your tail will actually bring your legs up to you, as well as setting you up on the natural arc of the jump, allowing you to hit any grab you want with much greater ease than trying to rush and reach for the grab. When hitting a jump, you don't wanna have your legs too straight because that will make it so you can't absorb the G-force going up the lip. And if there's any bumps in the snow, you'll get thrown off balance. You also don't want your legs too bent because it'll also make it so you don't have the platform to go and absorb the g-force of going up the lip and then you'll need more energy to pop up and extend. The power zone is in your stack position, maintain that slight bend in your legs. This is all the bend you need to generate power off your snowboard because power of your snowboard doesn't come from this big over exaggerated jump motion, instead it comes from that subtle shift of weight making sure you're fully utilizing the feature and your snowboard. A good way to tell if you have the right amount of bend in your legs is if your weight is set over the balls of your feet. If your squat down has you starting to hinge forward or break at the waist, that means you're adding too much bend in your legs and you need to straighten it out. You can tell if your legs are too straight if you don't feel the weight on the balls of your feet and you start to feel it more centered around your heels or the soles of your foot. You also need to make sure you're not opening your hips to the takeoff. Opening your hips will go and throw off your center of balance, making it much harder to control your airs. So you need to make sure you're staying stacked and keeping your body aligned. Next up is practicing keeping your board stable when riding off the features. I like to practice this when riding off of a box. Going on the box and trying to keep my board completely flat from the time on the box to leaving the feature, landing with a two-footed stack position. Remember, this is a small, subtle motion. You don't wanna be leaning back like you would for a tail press. If your nose starts dipping up, that's too much. Your goal is to subtly shift your weight from your front foot to your back foot, allowing your board to stay completely flat as you ride off a feature, resulting in landing at both feet at the same time. If your board starts to lift up or dip down, you know you aren't successfully transferring your weight in a way that keeps your board completely flat and level. This is a great skill to get in place because it's the same fundamental body principles that you'll be using off of the jumps. When hitting a jump, you will need to adjust this form slightly to match the angle of the takeoff. You're still trying to hold that stacked position while shifting your weight to your back foot, but you need to make sure you're not going and leaning forward or leaning back to overcompensate for the takeoff of the jump. The motion you wanna be using off the jump is very small and subtle and every jump rides slightly differently with more kick or less kick. So it's going to be down to you to figure out the ideal body position 
to fully pop off that specific jump. Start to add a small pop into your jumps, slowly building your way up until you're getting the maximum extension you feel comfortable with as a rider. You know you hit it right with the right amount of pop if you can do this motion without making any adjustments in the air. Adjustments in the air refer to arm flails, shifting of the hips, counterbalancing. Basically, you wanna pop off a jump and as soon as you pop off, your legs wanna to come to you naturally and then you can just hold that stacked neutral position, throating through the air, coasting all the way to the landing, landing both feet. The more still you can do this motion, the better your pop was off the takeoff. By getting your straight airs to this point of just relaxed, chilling, you'll really build your confidence on the jump, allowing you to then go and add more tricks and add more technicality to your riding in a natural line and progression. The base to every trick is this good foundation of a pop. So by doing this, not only will you become better at doing straight airs, but you'll become a better, more confident rider overall. So I highly recommend going out, working on your pops, and getting to the point where you can pop up, get big air, and just chill, resulting in a smooth two-footed landing that will feel absolutely amazing. And that's how you pop a snowboard. To recap, you want a slight bend in your legs, a completely stacked position, applying the pressure of your snowboard on the lip of the takeoff all the way until your tail snaps up with your full extension lining up with that moment, having your legs naturally come up to you, chilling in the air, matching the arc of the jump, landing with that two-footed stomp. Once you can do that, you'll know that you fully have your pops locked in and you're ready to move on to bigger features and bigger tricks. If you're still struggling with your straight airs or you just want help getting to that next level of riding, we have something called Addiction Plus. Addiction Plus is an amazing online coaching program where you can submit clips to us and ask us feedback in person during live streams. It is a great feature that lets us go and analyze your clips, spot your weaknesses, spot your strong points, and figure out what's your next step as a rider to improve and hit your riding goals. If you're struggling with snowboarding or just want help getting better at snowboarding, come join Addiction Plus. You can sign up now for a one month free trial and I guarantee you having a personalized specialized coach telling you what you need to improve and how to improve it is an absolute game changer for improving your riding. And it's not super accessible to most people paying $5,000 for a yearly committed team. So I'm so stoked we have Addiction Plus and we have the tools needed so you can go and take your riding to the next level. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you learned how to catch air and really steeze it out. I'm Tavis from Snowwear Addiction and our goal is to improve your riding.